Hello, my amazing artists. Today we are going to create a hexagon bumblebee texture hive. We are going to draw our hexagons, add our texture, and add our bumblebees at the end. For the background of our artwork, we are going to make different textures inside of multiple hexagons. We are going to create a hexagon background for our bumblebee hive. Hexagons are a very efficient shape. They are big enough for the bumblebee to get inside and they connect very well seamlessly together so that they are very efficient for the bumblebees for storing their honey and their babies. To draw our background, we are going to need a piece of paper. I am using a white piece of paper, a pencil, and a dark marker. I'm going to start by putting my circle shape in the middle of my paper. I can use anything that is the shape of a circle on the bottom. I'm going to trace around the circle with my pencil. Now I'm going to use the top and the sides of my circle. I'm gonna make a straight line on the top of my circle and a straight line on the bottom of my circle. Now I'm going to trace over those lines with my darker marker. Then I'm going to make dots on the left and right side of the circle and connect them from the top horizontal lines and the bottom horizontal lines using diagonal lines. I can go ahead and trace those lines now with my darker marker. Now I have my hexagon shape in the middle of my paper to start my honeycomb design. I can continue using my circle to trace first and then draw my hexagon lines. Now instead of using my circle, I'm just going to use lines to finish my artwork. Every time I see an arrow pointing out, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to do the same to the other side. Only horizontal lines on those pointy ends where the two diagonal lines meet. Now I'm going to connect the rest of those lines with a little dot in the middle and two diagonal lines. Now I have another hexagon. Do you see how well these shapes connect together? It's okay if you make a mistake. Mine aren't perfect either, and if we look at a bumblebee's hive, they don't have perfect hexagons either. They change depending on the size of the bumblebee and the use of the hive. I'm going to continue making my lines until I finish my hexagon bumblebee hive background. Remember, it's all about having fun and creating. It's okay if you make a mistake. Now we are going to create texture on our artwork. Texture is what you see and you feel. If I look at the texture of these bumblebee hives, they look very shiny and very bumpy. I'm going to explore different textures that I have around my house. So just use what you have. I have some Cheerios and in one section of my hexagons, I'm going to glue my Cheerios together to make it look like a bumblebee hive. To create balance in my artwork, when I decide on a texture, I'm going to make two or three of my hexagons the same texture, but they cannot touch. So I'm gonna add my glue and definitely spread my glue around evenly onto the hexagon. And I'm going to do two Cheerios hexagons. And if you see, they are very apart from each other and a good distance away to help create that balance in my artwork. Next, we will explore printing different shapes inside of our hexagon. Here I have orange and yellow paint that I mixed together. I also have some ZD pasta that I use to print my shapes. When I print, I dip into the paint and then dip onto my painting. I'm going to have to dip a couple of times because I will run out of paint. I continue this until I fill my whole shape. 
Remember, we're creating balance, so please make sure your different textures do not touch. Here, they are only one away. And I'm going to continue one more time because I thought this was extra fun. Creating textures with markers. I understand that some of you might not have the materials that I have, so you can do this only with markers if you would like to. I'm gonna find a color and I'm going to make small circles, kind of like my pasta circles, inside of the honeycomb. And I can do this with different colors. I don't have to stay the same color. I'm gonna make it interesting and now I'm adding some brown circles. And I'm gonna continue this until I like the way that it looks and it has great balance. Look, my browns are not touching. Gluing down quinoa or pasta texture. I had some extra quinoa in my house, which are very, very small little circles and spheres. So I'm going to add glue to my page first. Quinoa can get very messy, so please make sure you have a neat surface, surface to work on. And I'm just going to spread it around the glue that I paste it down. Make sure you put enough glue because if not they will not stick and they will roll around all over the place. I'm gonna continue this in two of my sections of my hexagons and remember they are not touching so we're creating an awesome sense of balance. creating textures with crayons. If you only have crayons, that's okay. You can use them to create your texture. I'm just creating a lot of very small loopy lines that are very close together to create some texture in one of my hexagons with my crayons. And lastly, texture under the paper. I have a texture plate here. You may not have a texture plate, but you can find different things that have different raised textures to put underneath your paper and create a texture rubbing. So what I do is I put that texture underneath the area I want to color on top of, and then I color using my crayon. Crayons work best for texture rubbings. I also found some burlap that I really enjoyed coloring with. So I finished my lesson project with that burlap because it has a really cool woven texture that really kind of makes it look like the honeycomb texture. And I just finished that with a couple of my different crayons coloring on top of them. And maybe even some other crayon designs. Now that I'm done with my different hexagon honeycomb textures, I just love the way they look together and it creates a great sense of unity and balance with the different textures. Here are some more texture examples. This is pasta used as texture and bubble wrap used as texture. Please use materials you can find in your home. I'm going to create a backing for my artwork since I have some heavy objects on my paper. I don't want my paper to flip flop around and I want it to be very sturdy. I only had a thick green piece of paper so that's why I'm using green. You can use other things like cardboard or you can glue it to another piece of paper to make it a thicker stronger piece of paper but I definitely suggest using some strong paper for this lesson since we will be painting and gluing heavy objects like the cereal and quinoa on my paper. It's time to draw our bumblebees. 
I need a white piece of paper, a black and yellow marker, and a pencil. I'm going to start by drawing an oval. You can use a pencil so you can erase, but I'm using a black marker so you can see it better. Then I need to draw the eyes and mouth and the stripes inside of the body. When I draw my stripe, I draw it at a curved line to make it look like my bumblebee is popping off the page. Now I add two large bumps at the top for his wings, a sideways triangle for his stinger, and I can color that in, and some lines inside of his wings to show that they are see-through wings. I'm going to repeat this if I want to make more bumblebees. Maybe they're facing in a different direction. This bumblebee is facing towards my other bumblebee. I can add my stinger, my antenna. Don't forget your antennas. I actually forgot it on my first one, so I have to go back and add it to my first bumblebee. And his bumpy wings. And some feet, if I wanna add some feet. Now I'm going to color in my bumblebee. One bumblebee I'm coloring in with marker. My other bumblebee I'm coloring in with crayon. You can use any materials that you have to color in your artwork. You do not need what I have in my art studio. Everybody has something different in their little art maker space. When I am done coloring my bumblebees, it is now time for me to cut out my bumblebees. I like to start with a shape and then go back and cut around my bumblebee. I don't wanna cut on the line, just around the line so that I don't cut off any important parts of my artwork. Now it's time to glue to our hexagon artwork background. You can make as many bumblebees as you would like. And I just need a little bit of glue and stick it down and hold it down and my artwork is complete. It was so much fun to make today. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Have fun creating! Thank you.